And for the second session, the first person to speak uh, will be Reginald de Schepper, medical ant anthropologist attached to the mental health and well being research group at the VUB Breil University in Brussels in Belgium. So, Reginald, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for inviting me for this uh, interesting conference. And I will talk uh, this evening about uh, a new kind of protocol I propose. It's uh, called uh, Every Year Younger Protocol. And also uh, it's about uh, the challenging balance between biohacking and uh, evidence-based science. And so why I propose this? Well. Of course, you know, there's an enormous progress in the field of longevity science. You know, the hallmarks of aging, you know, the mechanisms, and there are now a lot of interventions available. There are also some studies based on uh, humans uh, to turn back epigenetics clocks. But most of always these studies are ending with, with the phrase, uh, more research is needed. And on the other hand, you have a medical practice. Uh, it has some important principles. First of all, do not harm, which is of course an important ethical principle, but it might slow down implementation of new knowledge. And as you know, as we heard from the former uh, presenter, uh, evidence base takes a lot of medicine. Uh, a lot of time. So what is the problem? First of all, there's good news. There's an exponential growth in studies and, and progress of science and technology in the field of longevity science. For instance, uh, uh, the field of omics and artificial intelligence. Uh, so the progress in biology is uh, now comparable, I think, to what what uh, happened um, 30 years ago uh, in ICT with ICT. But the bad news is that it takes so much time to uh, put uh, new insights into practice. For instance, if you uh, have a case study, then you need pilot study. Finally, you end with uh, implementation, but that might take uh, 20 years. So the question is, is there a shortcut? And maybe biohacking. But what is biohacking? Well, it's it has several definitions, but one is the optimization and adaptation of nature using biology and technology. So it's about taking control over biological processes. Um, tricking the body by generating signals, signals that may improve our health. There are several examples, like, for instance, the fast mimicking <clears throat> diet of Walter Longo um, leads to autophagy. Heat and cold exposure uh, may activate longevity mechanisms and vaccination is also an example that triggers uh, immunity. But it's also some kind of do-it-yourself science. There is re less regulation. It's science-based, but open to everybody, what is a good thing, I think. And it can be used as a shortcut in science to quickly make use of the latest know knowledge. So there is no strict definition of biohacking no strict demarcation between evidence-based medicine and biohacking. And there is a gray zone. Uh, it includes sometimes pseudoscience and unethical practices. And why is it now a good time? Because there is an exponential growth of knowledge. Uh, we have uh, almost 2 million of papers published in 28,000 journals. It doubles every nine years. And to give you one example, uh, there are now more than 500,000 papers on obesity. 
and more than 100 publications each day. So not even uh, an expert can follow this field. Uh, also, it's now these data, this uh, uh, body of knowledge is now accept, accessible to almost everyone. So everyone can go to PubMed and, and look up for these things. Um, also, there is, we have now opportunity for self-measurement. And there are also some do-it-yourself interventions, not always uh, very good things uh, or uh, not that I would uh, propose to do this. For example, one uh, very uh, um, striking example is a gene editing kit. And I looked it up. Uh, you can buy it now uh, for $169. It's a kit that you can use to um, for back to your gene editing. But uh, biohacking is also kind of patient empowerment. And there are several examples of biohackers. You probably know Joshua Jainer. Uh, but there are also people who do not call themselves necessarily biohackers, but that these are people, for instance, with uh, serious diseases who, instead of waiting un until there was a protocol to, to uh, cure themselves, they went to the uh, medical literature and they found out how they could, uh, what, what to do to cure themselves. And uh, th there are several good examples of that. So uh, there is a, an intersection between uh, biomedical science and biohacking. Uh, and it has pros and cons. And I think um, there um, is situation. Also uh, my protocol I want to propose uh, it's called the El Kaya protocol. And we have to weigh the pros and balances. So there is a risk of uh, doing things that are not fully um, evidence-based, but there is also a risk of not taking action. And uh, an example of that, uh, there was a few years ago, a study who said, uh, who concluded that uh, Aspirin may help treat aggressive cancer, but it's too early to recommending people start taking it. More research is needed. But what if you have uh, an aggressive cancer? If you wait, uh, then, then you will be dead. And uh, I, I would also like to quote Niels Osmar. He said, remember that if we do nothing, the aging process will kill us. So, now, I, after these um, thoughts, I would propose the El Kaya protocol. And it's based on a book I have written. Uh, it has been published a few months ago. It addresses a wide audience. And in part two of that book, I give an overview of promising interventions, um, most of them and with the phrase, uh, more research is needed. But then I thought, what if we could um, develop uh, a protocol based on all the existing longevity studies? Um, what, what can we do? Uh, what is the best thing we can do now? And can we combine several interventions to propose a protocol? or to develop protocols, a protocol uh, to extend a healthy lifespan. And these interventions, well, the, the, the basis is a healthy lifestyle because this is, there is enough evidence that this is safe and a good practice. And it's based on the seven pillars, uh, nutrition, physical uh, activity, stress management, social support, sleep, purpose, and environment. 
secondly, we can use uh, supplements or proposed supplements, which are generally considered as safe and, and good, uh, helpful. Then we have medicines, which is more risky maybe, things like rapamycin and medicine. And then we also have uh, some new strategies like uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, uh, microbiome rejuvenation, and also some existing protocols like the TRIM study. And I think we will, we may now expect uh, um, the, the results of the TRIM X, the second part of the study. I think it was uh, announced to to finish uh, in November. So, and also uh, another uh, intervention, combined intervention, is that of Dr. Kara um, Fitzgerald. And what is also important that is measurement because uh, it's not completely safe. So we have to um, do measurements to control. Uh, and to minimize the risk. And also we need uh, professional medical supervision. And the characteristics of uh, that protocol is its work in progress, uh, I, I could say. In the end, it will be all right, but it's not quite right. So it's not yet the end as uh, John Lennon said. Uh, and it's a challenging balance based on evidence-based medicine on one hand, and biohacking. So it tries to combine principles of safety and also it takes uh, the time it takes. It's a, an open protocol, which, which means that everybody can make uh, suggestions for improvement. Um, we can use uh, the principle of quality circle. Quality circles are, um, it's, um, it was first uh, proposed and uh, by the industry to improve certain products. And um, the idea is that we are striving for trans transdisciplinary consen consensus in which uh, people from different disciplines can um, have their input in it. And so hopefully we, can, we will come to consensus. It's also context dependent, by which I mean that, for instance, your age is an uh, important factor. If you are 20 years, you will not um, want to take uh, a risk. But in case of you are 70, maybe um, it's worth uh, taking some risk if there is some uh, promising effectivity. Uh, and what is also uh, an ID, it's a, a dynamic uh, protocol, which means that it is based on the most recent studies. And that has also a consequence that we are uh, willing to make changes in it as soon as there is new evidence um, urging us to do some changes. So we're making the path by walking it. And to conclude, of course, such a approach is a challenging. Uh, for instance, one question is how to test a changing protocol, uh, how to obtain approval for such a protocol from ethic committees. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to propose these ideas and uh, hope you can help me and, and uh, my colleagues to, uh, to develop such a protocol. And what can we expect? We don't know, uh, is there, well, my hope is that we will, uh, there, there will be synergies so that if you are combining several um, approaches, several, uh, interventions that you may have some generic uh, effects. And, um, but also multiple, we have to be aware that multiple beneficial interventions may also be harmful. 
for instance, if you combine several uh, interventions uh, aiming autophagy, uh, we are not sure that combined it's better than, than one intervention. So we have also to be aware you can buy yourself, uh, buy, buy your hack yourself to that. And so indeed, uh, to finish, to conclude, uh, indeed, again, we need more research, but uh, preferably before we are dead. And uh, that was my talk, and I'm open for uh, your uh, feedback. And you can contact me also uh, on my email. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ray, uh, Reginald. I have uh, one question, but uh, first, maybe there are other questions. Um, I see a comment of Len, uh, and uh, I see a question of uh, Edward. Uh, so the question of Edward is, how can you make biohacking sufficiently legal to be organized by most medical doctors? so that populations participate in the knowledge. Uh, this, and then a more comment, this might be where the functional medicine current move is going to. But maybe because it's kind of in the same uh, domain, I will, I will ask my question uh, so you can uh, answer to the two questions uh, together. Um, yeah. I, I globally agree with uh, all what you are uh, saying, I would say, but I miss a point about uh, measuring the results of all this uh, biohacking, you know, because if people are, let's say, testing things, but we don't know the results, it's useful for these people, uh, potentially, but not for the uh, for the other potential uh, patients and for this for all people um, uh, uh, getting old. So do you have a proposal concerning this? Because I, yeah, I think it's very important. Yeah, yeah yes, of course. And uh, indeed the, the real biohackers all are measuring themselves and using the data for themselves. But here the idea is to collect all the data and to, to do a study about it. Uh, so this, this is a, indeed a very important aspect. We, we would like to collect all this data. So we have to think about it, that we not just are measuring uh, for individuals, but also to, to, to um, uh, collect all this data. Um, so that's, that's the first uh, question. Then the other question, is it legal? Well, biohacking, it's not illegal, but it's in a gray zone. And so, we, we have certainly to avoid illegal things, but um, uh, other interventions like uh, use of metformin and rapamycin are also probably illegal uh, or in a gray zone. So, so we, we have to try to find a solution for that. That is not completely illegal, but I, I agree that it is sometimes at the limit of, of what uh, is um, legal. And then the other question, I, I think, yeah, okay, uh, DJ. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, I think uh, Edouard was uh, asking more uh, how to facilitate, you know, how to make it uh, e more easier um, uh, in a legal way. Yeah. But yeah, uh -huh. you answer, yeah. That's why, because I think DJ and I have the same as you here. If we want to have, Results, statistics. In fact, we want to organize clinical trials. We don't say it, but that's what we're doing mini clinical trials between biohackers yeah. or people being biohacked. This, except in Germany for non invasive uh, approaches, comes into uh, quite a, a legal burden of having, um, as we were saying, approval from ethical committees that are country specific, that are uh, very, very specific. It's a huge work, and um, uh, it's complex. Um, and uh, medical doctors currently, um, there is no big, no framework for that. Um, so everything that's happening is complex. 
you need to pay. There is no way to finance this. Um, and, and you always feel uh, about to go into jail for whatever you try to do when it starts to be large. So it, it's a mistake because medicine is not only about very large clinical trials, uh, because uh, it's also about knowledge uh, and gradual knowledge, ground medicine. <clears throat> but there is no framework for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with your remarks, but uh, I propose to, to work in several steps. And the first step is just uh, developing a, a proposal. Uh, and then the next step is to try to do some kind of clinical trial to, um, yeah, to, to test this proposal. Okay, thank you, uh, Reginald. And